teal. I think that's what they used before. Um, wait. Yellow and teal. All right. Everything's good, which means we can get on our way immediately. Second game, guys. Star shaped. Is he gonna stick to his huntresses? It's been a long time since I didn't see him play huntresses. So I think I think it's actually kind of a trademark thing even. Maybe he just likes huntresses or maybe he plays them all the ways all the time because it is kind of his reputation. Would be interesting uh, to ask him. Maybe someday we'll be doing a dual cast or something and I'm going to be able to ask him. Ancient of War creep for Sonic. And of course no Ancient of War anywhere yet so um, yes this is going to be Huntresses. Starship scouts it out and an offensive Ancient of War down here. Probably to harass in the beginning and then later on when the Huntress Hall is finished he will be able to build hunts from it. And of course Demon Hunter and maybe maybe Keeper? No, pot him again. Of course Keeper is probably a very bad hero against uh, Demon Hunter, come to think of it. Another Wisp positioned here maybe for an Ancient of War Scout uh, creep later on. And Sonny's going to be checking out the situation, scouting himself with a Wisp, but I, I think he has a pretty good idea what's coming. Star-shaped Probably his biggest weakness isn't playing Huntresses all the time. Maybe his biggest weakness is uh, being so predictable all the time. Well, at least every time I see him, he, he is, uh, of course, playing Huntresses and being aggressive. So uh, I think that's something you can exploit when you're a very good player. All right, Ancient of, Ancient of War, War down here. He's just gonna uproot probably in a second. Yeah, become very tanky. And here, the bottom of the moon and a little bit of nice um, projectile dodging with the building and cancelling of moon wells. Does cost a bit of uh, resources though. Demon Hunter not interested in creeping down here. Gonna be going for harassment once more. And here we have another moon well, and also the moon well takes damage. When, uh, when buildings in production take damage, you get less gold back from it when you cancel it. So this is actually getting a bit expensive for Sonic, but he probably just wants to buy time for his demon hunter. He needs to cancel now. Oh, he doesn't need to cancel now. Now he needs to cancel. Sonic knows exactly when to do what, and he knows better than I, obviously. He's a very good player. Tech already started. No hunters all this time for Sonic. So he's not respecting Star Shaped that much this time around, it seems. Of course, Melting Valley with a huge distance between the two bases allows for a more greedy play, I guess. Team Hunter uses a mana burn, but that's all for now. And probably right now they're both going to be getting the boots, the Demon Hunter at the very least. And. Ah, nice awareness by Sonic, knowing there's a Wisp here, but he can't attack it. Of course, there's lots of juke spots for uh, for Wisps on every map. Ancient of War has fallen. What it did do is prevent this creep, by the way, uh, denied with the Ancient of War. But... I don't think it's too big of a deal. The Demon Hunter is not so level-reliant. If he gets the last hit with the bottom, no, just barely too late. And again, we have what we saw last game. Both heroes on the opposing side of the map trying to deal as attack. much damage as possible. One wisp has to be detonated. But of course, the Priestess of the Moon, her damage output is a lot lower than that of a Demon Hunter. But the, bill, uh, the base is um, closed off, walled off. He can't come in. And this Ancient of War will not fall with the Wisp preparing. But here's the first Huntress, and this is where things start to get a little bit annoying. But with Shadow Melt, Sonic can micro uh, pretty well. Shadow Melting both archers. A little bit unnecessary. Shouldn't lose anything here. Just taking a bit of damage on the buildings. And 
And yeah, star shape. As said before, being very aggressive, never giving his opponent any time to breathe. And I guess he does value the experience on the Demon Hunter very highly. Because that's what he's uh, doing right now. He's preventing the Demon Hunter from leveling up quickly. Oh, Huntress, will she get away? Demon Hunter is faster, but yes, we'll get blocked again. The block, not the best we've ever seen from Star Shaped. Maybe ping problems, maybe just a little rusty on the blocking. And tier 2, by the way, which I have totally missed. Tier 2 this time from Star Shaped realizes, alright, that pure aggression, pure pushing didn't work at all against Sonic. I need to mix up my strategy a little bit. Ah, Shadow Melt, a little too late. And second hero, Dark Ranger. Heroes with orb effects are always um, valued very highly against the Demon Hunter. Because uh, with the Cold Arrow, for instance, or the Dark Arrow, you should always kind of have enough mana for him. Despite the mana burn. And the Naga second for Sonic. Level 1 still on all heroes. So creeping... This is the only camp that has been creeped, crept this entire game. So yeah, they're sitting right on top of each other. A player's force Double Ancient of Lore. No tech just yet. I don't know if he scouted the tier 2. Maybe that should give him a window of opportunity for a tier 3 tech. And look at this, Fairy Dragons. I remember a game of a German EPS player who played only fairy dragons and a panda against a human. It was pretty outrageous back in the day because no, no one had ever seen it before. Is it gonna be mass fairy the dragons? Forces are under attack. They are of course magic immune, and uh, if you guys didn't know that. Every race has at least one magic immune unit. There are destroyers, spell breakers, well, actually, Orc don't have any. <laughs> but Night Elves have two. They have Dryads and they have Fairy Dragons. And still, feeling each other out here. Of course, it's uh, a lot more dangerous to be poking and prodding with a few Huntresses against a Naga. Because Naga are obviously very good at singling out specific targets and chasing them. And it's actually going to be mass fairy dragons. Alright. I have not seen this in... Six years? Maybe? Six years? Seven years? Something like that. Th as I said before, th that time it was against a human with a panda. This time it is a knight of mirror. With the priest of the moon and dark ranger. And now here comes a scout of the double ancient of wind. He has not yet seen the fairy dragons. <coughs> Starship is hiding them so far, but here it is. He saw the fairy dragon. And getting one fairy dragon doesn't make a lot of sense, I would think, because night elves, first of all, don't have many casters. And in this stage of the game, when you're not playing against bears, I don't think you're going to be going for talents, or m mass talents, rather. So he, I think Sonic is right now already assuming, all right, it's mass fairy dragons. And this is interesting, like, when you see this, when you get the information, alright, my opponent is going mass fairy dragons. What strategy do you choose? How often do you play against mass fairy dragons? Will you immediately know what to go for? What the best course of action is? I'm not sure. Well, oh, he's going yes. bears. Sorry. Obviously, Back. bears can't shoot up in the air, so fairy dragons seem very good. But they don't have a lot of damage. They have 14 to 16. That's uh, like tickling. Well, it's a little bit more than tickling, but it's not much more. Actually, it's pretty much the same as archers. Alright. But also, fair dragons piercing damage, which means they don't deal a lot of damage to heroes. And we have the orb of venom. And a lot of phase shift. Skill we rarely see. I really like these units. Fairy dragons. We see him most in Night Elf versus Orc, once the armies get big. So the Spirit Walkers take damage all the time when they use spells. 
but there's normally never more than two. Ah, against you and we also see him when uh, come late game. Alright, maybe now the first engagement of the game. Those two players have been dancing around each other all this time, but now, perhaps committing to a real fight. Well, first of all, the Dark Ranger needs to be careful. I'm surprised he didn't try to go for it. Uh, I guess he doesn't want to trade in his TP for Dark Ranger, but now Rejuvenation gives the Demon Hunter so much desired tankiness. And another one is ready here with the next Druid of the Claw, and he has to TP out. He stri was trying to go for the hero kill. Didn't work out at all. He even had a staff on the Naga, so I don't know about that decision right there to try to go for the Demon Hunter. Anyways, he TP'd up here to his expansion. Trying to win the game with the economic advantage and the numbers advantage. Finally level 2 for the Demon Hunter. Now we have bears, archers and dryads. And of course archers may be produced uh, even at tier 3 because they're very good against fairy dragons. Let's take a look. Where's the Ancient of War? Did it die? Did it die to the creeps or something? I don't know. Alright. Expansion has not been scouted yet, and it's not the most obvious of moves, but oh man, all these fairy dragons are really low hit points, and one dies to creeps. That's not what you, what you want to have happen. Nice creep tag now, though, by Sonic, does he have a staff for the Dark Ranger? Does not, and his micro back way too late, and no TP on the Priestess of the Moon. Gets the creep, but it's not gonna get the item, I don't think. And another fairy dragon dies, and another Huntress will also find her grave in this spot. What did he get? Oh, greater invulnerability. Great item. For both Demon Hunter and Naga. Probably though for the Demon. And yeah, Sonic has absolutely no idea about this expansion or otherwise he would most likely be attacking it right now. So maybe if Starshape can hold this, even though it's looking bad, he may have a chance in this game. There's a lot of fairy dragons to be honest. But look at this, it's only archers, and it takes two to three volleys to kill him off. Oh, Priests of the Moon, Priests of the Moon, be careful. Retreats back to a moon wells in time. But this demon hunter just seems to be unkillable, and these bears are just clawing through everything that's on the ground. And now the fairy dragons really hurt. No more moon juice. And he may have an expansion, but if he loses everything inside his main base, including his buildings, that expansion is not going to be doing him much good. Demon Hunter level 3 all of a sudden. He was level 1 for the longest time. Now maybe Hero Focus can kill him. No, Staff back and he does have a Staff Teleportation. Heals back to full and Staffs back into battle. Onto an uh, Archer, a little bit dangerous. But yeah, Demon Hunter back to full HP and I don't think he can bring him down low again. And even if he does, there's going to be another Staff ready. Second Angel of the Wind is going to be falling shortly. And the Pieces of the Moon just barely healing herself in time. Now trying to go for the kill. Can he get it? The tree is trying to help out against the Demon Hunter. Po healing potion used on the bottom. Who's going to die first? It's not going to be the Demon Hunter because he staffs out. But that is a lot, uh, yeah. a lot of extension here. From Sonic, maybe gonna lose his Naga. No, Potion of Inolability saves her again. Pardon needs to be careful. Shadow Metal use. Does he have a dust? No, he does not. On the Naga Sea Witch. No more production facilities, and these units can just come rallying in. And the Pardon dies, and the game is over despite the expansion for Star Shaped. Not trying to go for Huntresses the second game around, surprising me, and perhaps also Sonic that game. Well, he did go for a few Huntresses, but not the normal, like, 12 star-shaped Huntress style. And that is a 2-0 for Sonic, which means the Ukrainian Night Elf player is going to be the first one to advance to the grand final of the Zodiac Christmas Cup. And the next game I'm going to be showing you is going to...